Hey there everybody, today's video I'm going to share with you some cool things about South Jordan, Utah. What are the pros and the cons of actually living there? And after being here two years and spending tons of time in South Jordan, I got some things that you should know and I'm getting after it right now. Welcome back everybody, I'm Greg Spackman, I'm with the Living in Salt Lake City channel, so if you want to learn everything all about Salt Lake City and the surrounding cities, then please click the subscribe button and click the little bell to be notified every time I do a new video. I do a ton of different videos about all the different surrounding cities. If there's a specific video you want, comment below with what you want to know, and I'll make that video. So if you're looking at making that move here to South Jordan or anywhere in the Salt Lake City area, then please give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email. I've got your back if you're moving here, and I'd love to talk to you. Today I'm going to do it a little bit differently and just give you the pros first and then the cons. And so pro number one is the shopping and restaurants. South Jordan has a ton of different restaurants and shopping that you could do. They have a place called The District, which is huge, and it has a Megaplex movie theater in there with an IMAX screen. It's got a Hobby Lobby, a Target, a Petco, Ross, a Harmon's Grocery Store, JCPenney, a bunch of other shop, little shops and places to eat, Pizza Place, uh, Noodles and Company, that sort of thing. They have a place called The Wild Rose that's a sit-down place. They got a Sizzler. Yes, they got a Sizzler. If you've eaten there, uh, comment below. But they have that. They have a Red Robin. They have a Cafe Zupas, a Chick-fil-A, of course. And just across the street from the district, they have an Olive Garden, a Raising Cane's, which is pretty decent chicken. They have Longhorn Steakhouse. Um, plenty of food options and shopping here. Elsewhere in South Jordan, you're going to have a, they have a Costco. So if you're a Costco fan, I definitely I go there. You can save a ton of money on gas by getting gas at Costco. It's usually 10, 20, 30 cents a gallon less than a Maverick or anywhere else for the most part. Murphy's would be the second cheapest, and that's going to be in Riverton over by the Walmart. They have a really cool cheesecake place that if you get a chance to eat at, it's called Momo's or go there to get cheesecake. If you're a cheesecake fan, it's awesome. Just let them know that my daughter, Megan, is uh, the one that sent you there. She used to work there, and it's awesome. So... Those are the pros kind of of as far as the shopping goes and the restaurants. There's a ton of stuff for you to get, be able to eat uh, in South Jordan. Pro number two of living in South Jordan, Utah is Daybreak. And if you haven't heard of Daybreak, I have a video that you can watch on Daybreak specifically about seven things about it. But Daybreak is awesome. It's a master plan community. has its own lake that you're going to be able to fish at, kayak, canoe. You can't swim in it. But uh, you can do anything with a, like a boat other than with a motor on it. They have like 30-something parks in Daybreak. They have 30 miles of walking trails and biking trails. You can bike all over the place. Once again, the Ochre Lake that's there is 67 acres. And the fish that you can catch are bass, catfish, and trout. And I've seen some huge catfish pulled out of there. I'm not sure if I'd eat them, but you definitely can catch them there. It has six pools, so tons of pools, fitness centers, classes for the fitness centers. Uh, internet is included in your HOA there. HOA is expensive there, but it includes your internet in it, which is nice. And then I think that it also helps take care of the lake. They have a great pizza place there called Maxwell, so try that out. It's one of the best pizza places that I've found uh, anywhere around this area. Uh, they have a Harmon's grocery store that's in there. And then just outside of Daybreak, well of the older side of Daybreak. Side of it is the Smiths, and then there's some other little shops and stuff like Jersey Mike's and a bank and Starbucks and that sort of stuff that's right outside of uh, Daybreak itself. So that's Daybreak in a nutshell, but I go into it in even more detail, and I'm going to be making an even more detailed video where I do a walkthrough area, fly my drone, and that sort of stuff of Daybreak. Pro number three of living in South Jordan is it has two temples. So if you are of the LDS Mormon faith, you got two temples. They're about four miles apart, like a 10-minute drive. One of them is called the Ochre Mountain Temple. It's near Daybreak, right off Banginer. And then the other one is called the Jordan River Utah Temple. And both of these are, you know, for you in South Jordan. So that's an awesome thing if you're that. They look super cool at night. If you're driving by the Daybreak one, it sits up on the hill so you can see it all over the valley. It's awesome. So that's 
uh, pro number three. Pro number four is location of South Jordan. So I'm going to switch over to the map so that I can give you an idea and point out some things on the map. Here we have South Jordan highlighted in red. It borders West Jordan to the north, to the south, Harriman and Riverton, and to the east, it has Sandy and Draper. So it's surrounded by those cities, and then the mountains are out to the west. As far as distance and stuff, it's 25 minutes to downtown Salt Lake, 25 minutes to the airport, and we scroll out on the map so you can get idea. So Salt Lake is just north up this way. So you can either go over I-15 to go to Salt Lake or the other way would be take Bangor up to I-80 over to Salt Lake. Either way is good. You just check whatever Apple Maps or Google Maps wants you to go that direction. The airport is right here. And then Park City in relation to it is just out this way. So you go out 80. It's 45 minutes to Park City to get to Jordan now. Reservoir out here if you wanted to do all your boating and everything else that you wanted to do on a real reservoir or lake, it's about 49 minutes. Then it's 40 minutes to five mile pass where I take my Jeep out. And that's just down here, out here past Fairfield. And you'll see five mile pass here. So you are going to do all these mountains that are right in here. You can go all in there and take your four wheel drive out, your motorcycles, ATVs, side by sides. All of that is done out this way, and it's amazing. So that's a super cool place that I go all the time. Then you have, um, it's 40 minutes to Tibble Fork Reservoir, and Tibble Fork Reservoir is right here in, right here. It's right out American Fork Canyon. Then you can do a four-wheel drive and camping and hiking and all of that out in the canyon there. Then if you want to go to Vegas, it's five and a half hours right down I-15 through here, right through St. George to Las Vegas. So that's good. And then if you're wanting to go to Los, Los Angeles, you're looking at 9, 10, 12, 14 hours. Depends on traffic. I think it took us once 14 hours. Then it took us nine hours to get back with no traffic. So And so that's location of where South Jordan fits. I think it's amazing that it's so close to Salt Lake City, but it's not in Salt Lake City and all the other things that it has going for it, which I'll keep going. Pro number five of living in South Jordan, Utah is the parks and the sports. The Salt Lake City Bees are moving their uh, team to the Daybreak location. I can show you where that is right here on the map. So you can see right here, it's going to be right off Banginer, which is awesome. They have the Glenmore Golf Club, which is an 18-hole par 72 golf course if you're a golfer. The Bingham Creek Regional Park, it's a 160-acre park that's just being opened. Parts of it are open now, but it'll have multi-purpose fields, playground, walking paths, pavilions, bike trails. Um, it even is going to have a disc golf course and more things to do. So that's super cool as well. And then the last thing that's kind of fun to do in South Jordan is the Mulligans Golfing Games. So if you're into putt-putt, you got that to do as well. And that's kind of your sports and parks as far as that goes in South Jordan, which it's awesome. Pro number six is public transportation and South Jordan has great public transportation. It's serviced by the tracks red line, which goes from where you can see here on the map, it goes from daybreak all the way up into Salt Lake City. And then once you get in up there, then you can switch and take another tracks over to the airport or you can take another one down to Draper, which you'd be better off driving to Draper, but you could do it via the track system. So if you work in downtown Salt Lake City and live in South Jordan, you wouldn't actually even need to take your car. You could do you could take the tracks up there. It also has busing to get around. And then you got Uber and Lyft as another option to get around. To take the track system, it's like 85 bucks a month, which is super cheap for unlimited rides on it. And that's the public transportation and South Jordan has got it. Pro number seven is if you're into new construction homes and you want to build your own home, we can do that in South Jordan still. So they are building new construction homes. They're available. You just got to reach out to me so that we can discuss what you're looking for. And I can give you some ideas of the different builders that are going to be building in there. And we can put a plan together so that you can get under contract on a new construction home. Pro number eight is friendly people. You're going to find in South Jordan that the people there are very, very friendly. In Utah in general, the people are friendly, but South Jordan seems to have an extra level of friendliness to it. Maybe that's because of the two temples that are there or just the people that moved to South Jordan just seem to be more friendly. So 
know that that should be something that you're going to be welcomed into and it should be great as far as friendly people go. Now let's talk about the cons of living in South Jordan, Utah. Please drop me a like if you're getting value out of this video so far. By giving me a like, that actually lets more people know about my videos so that I can actually get out there more. Con number one of living in South Jordan, Utah is the distance to the ski resorts and the canyons is further. You're going to add an extra 15 to 30 minutes than if you were living in Sandy or Draper or some of the other cities that are right along the mountain range. So just know that the further west you go, in South Jordan, the further you're going to be away from all the canyons to do stuff. Now, I gave you in the location, it's 45 minutes to Park City. So it's still not far. It's just not 10 minutes away like it can be from certain cities. So just know that that's con number one. And, you know, it's probably not that big of a deal to get over to the canyons. But you need to know that. Con number two is the traffic. And going east to west in South Jordan sometimes could be a nightmare. While other times it can be super nice, but know that you're going to hit lots of traffic lights and whatnot in South Jordan. If you're coming around Bangator, it's really not a problem on Bangator getting up to South Jordan. It's just once you get off the freeway that you got to deal with stuff. Same thing coming south on coming south on Bangator right now where they don't have the overpass there uh, that they're building. You're going to deal with some traffic at that light. Uh, otherwise, it's pretty smooth sailing up to West Jordan other than the one part where you're going to have to stop. But that's traffic kind of going east to west, and then you're going to hit your normal I-15 traffic going into Salt Lake where it's hit and miss depending upon time of day. Uh, you can hit lots or an accident or that sort of thing, but con number two is traffic. Con number three is the grid system. So the grid system is how they label the streets here. So the streets are named like 11,200 south by 4,000 east, and so those are all relative to the temple in downtown Salt Lake, how far it is away from it, and once you learn, when you when you first get here, the grid system is going to make no sense, and you're going to be like, this is confusing as all heck. Why can't they just name the streets Broadway Boulevard? Once you've been here about two years or so, somewhere in that range, you're going to start to really enjoy the grid system, so it's going to turn into a pro but just know that when you first get here, it's going to make no sense. And you're going to be like, why doesn't I can't get how do I get around? So you're going to use your phone to get everywhere instead of the grid system. And then once you get used to it, you'll be able to pinpoint exactly where things are based on the number because it all makes sense at that point. Con number four is the air quality here in Utah. Good at certain times of the year and really bad at other times. We have something called the inversion layer where like cold air is trapped by warm air. And so it creates this awful air quality. We also end up with California blowing all their forest fire smoke to us where you won't be able to see the mountains at all. And then we also get lots and lots of wind that'll blow the dust all up since we are in a desert and that'll cause poor air quality. So if you have asthma or other breathing conditions, you should definitely check with your doctor and definitely visit here to make sure if that's going to bother you or not or cause a problem. Uh, I don't see it as a big negative for myself. It doesn't really bother me, the air quality, but that's my me. Con number five is our bad drivers, and we have some of the worst drivers that I've seen anywhere. I thought when I lived in Nashville that they had bad drivers. We have much worse drivers. We have people that cut, cut you off. They don't signal, they drive 100 miles an hour on the freeway, they make erratic changes, they run the red lights, which red lights seem to be a big problem here because people don't want to wait three more minutes for the next light, and sometimes they take three minutes to go through the light, it seems. Just know that you're going to run into bad drivers, so you're going to need to drive more defensive than maybe you have driven in the past, or maybe where you're driving they already have bad drivers, so that may not be any big deal. You may find our drivers not bad, compared to what you're used to. But that's con number five, the bad drivers. Con number six is if you want some sort of nightlife in South Jordan, you're not going to get it because South Jordan doesn't have anything. Most of the stuff shuts down 8, 9, 10 p.m. at night, so you're not going to be able to get any sort of real nightlife. In South Jordan, you're going to be going up to Salt Lake for any sort of nightlife as far as that goes. And that's con number six. Con number seven could be a con for you or a pro for you, depending upon your view of the LDS Mormon faith. But there are lots and lots of them in South Jordan. And that's 
probably due to the fact that there's two temples, but you should know that there are a lot more than in some of the other cities. And that could be con number seven or it could be a pro for you. Con number eight is the alcohol laws in Utah. And we have some of the strictest alcohol laws, if not the strictest alcohol laws in the entire nation. Your blood alcohol content for DUI is 0.05. You can't buy alcohol on Sunday. At the grocery stores, you can only buy beer and some other hard seltzer type of stuff. Otherwise, you go to the state-run liquor store and deal with liquor that way. And they are closed on holidays and Sundays, so you got to plan ahead. Definitely, if you're wanting to watch NFL and you want... You know, you run out of beer, you're not going to be getting any if you didn't buy it ahead of time. Well, if you made it this far and you want to move or want more information about moving to South Jordan, Utah, please reach out to me. Give me a call. Shoot me a text. Send me an email. Love to talk to you about moving here to the South Jordan or anywhere in Utah for that matter. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, be rad.